everybody dreams. But Louisa's dreams all come true. Teen Witch. Winning is a magical feeling. Happy Halloween, everyone! Now that we're getting closer to the date, people are gobbling up candy, carving up jack-o'-lanterns, and putting on their favorite creepy crawly flicks. Today, we're going to be talking about the horror staple in everyone's household, Teen Witch. The best movies are the ones that tell you the plot via the soundtrack. By now, I think everyone's familiar with Teen Witch, the timeless tale of high school outcast Louise, who encounters a fortune teller with a seashell on her head and discovers she has secret magic powers that will be unlocked on her 16th birthday. Once said powers are unlocked, she becomes the Teen Witch. Her new powers allow her to dress cooler and get everything she ever wanted. That is, everything except for something real. Also, sometimes it's a musical. And it will always happen exactly when you forget that it's technically supposed to be a musical. What the heck? We know that we are no fools, cause we get stuck with the high school blues. We all got the high school blues indeed. Did you know that this was originally conceived as a female teen wolf? Just some food for thought. Nobody wants to date you because you're a dog. A dog! A dog! <gasps> teen Witch, above all else, is a morality tale. Sure, magical hijinks are all fun and games, but at the end of the day, Louise learns a lesson about being true to yourself and everyone comes out better for it. Or do they? Because I posit to you that everyone in Teen Witch is actually the worst. Except for Brad Powell. Firstly, these flippin' teachers. These trash bags should all be fired immediately. What is up Mr. Weaver's butt anyway? Why does he have this uncontrollable desire to bully honor students? Skipping grades is not enough for Miss Miller. She feels she can also afford to waste our valuable time as well. Like, he's annoyed she knows the material. What got him into teaching, I ask? I hate it when students study what I tell them to. Arr! But the absolutely worst part is when he jacks Louise's birth control pills. Birth control pills? What? Who does that? The movie treats this pretty darn lightly considering how many lines this crosses. But I don't know, the school seems kind of messed up. The board has seen fit to ask me to teach you sex education. Birth Okay, so we've established that Louise is a big ol' smarty pants, which is part of why people don't like her, but there's like a nerd hierarchy here, and she is way higher on the totem pole than some of these mouth breathers. Ugh. Hi. You wanna smoke some weed? Why were there so many stereotypical nerds in this movie? I don't know why we're supposed to feel sorry for Louise when all the other nerds in this are a bunch of judgy Steve Urkels or creepy sexual assaultists. That guy is sent to a hell dimension for the rest of the movie and never seen or heard from again, and deservedly so. Uh, he was harmless. I don't really understand this high school's popularity ranking either, as it appears these rapper guys are on the cool list, but I mean, that could be open to interpretation. Look at how funky he is. Louise's BFF Polly has got a major crush on this guy, so in order to assert her dominance, she must defeat him in rap battle. I don't really give a about trying to stop that. Top that! Big deal. Stop that! Unreal. You can try to you, blue. I will make a fool of you. Top that! Ladies and gentlemen, the whitest movie ever made. Thanks for the spell, Louise. She never could have won his heart otherwise. Why is everyone such a jerk off to each other in this? Top that! I don't even know with Polly, guys. We're supposed to pity her because Louise's popularity gets to her head, but I just think they're both bad friends from the get-go. Nobody shows up at Louise's Sweet 16 party because popular girl Randa is having a party the same night, which she finds out via phone call from Polly. But like, hey dudes, here's a question. Why was Polly so late? Because she was buying a present for her last minute at the mall? That's still being a crummy friend, man. It's like birthday on Elm Street. Is it? Polly and Louise are like competing in the petty Olympics. Jeez Louise, what did you do, tripper? 
Okay, but she doesn't know Louise accidentally magic that. That's just jealousy, and it's an ugly look. And wait, that girl's just fine anyway, so what's the problem? And I'm not sure she's being ignored any more than usual when Louise becomes popular. She's actually making an effort sometimes, and even then, Polly acts like a total butt munch. But that's just a transfer of haterade to Louise from Randa, who is totally being slut-shamed. She's wearing a long sleeve shirt, boots, and a double layered plaid skirt, but apparently that's sleazy? It was pretty sleazy. It was pretty sleazy. I guess it's because she doesn't dress like an amateur detective. Like she's part of an exclusive trench coat club. Like she's in witness protection. Like she's a ninja turtle in disguise for a pizza night out. Like a vagrant living under a bridge. Like a really bad shoplifter. You might think Randa and her fellow cheerleaders singing about giving up dollhouses because they like boys is perhaps playing into gender stereotypes or even incredibly silly. But actually, maybe they're feminist icons? That was a cheer, was it? I get it though, right? They're superficial and uptight. Not like our lovable Polly and Louise. But I don't know, they just look like a bunch of dorks having a fun goofy time to me, so maybe the reason they dislike Louise isn't so much that she dresses bad and acts kinda awkward. Maybe it's because she's a creep. Even before Louise gets power, she's kind of a twerp. I mean, it's always a pity party, and for what? Yeah, yeah, I feel really bad for her having to live across the street from Randa in her mansion of a home. I mean, she already has the tools at her disposal, which I suppose is the lesson the movie wishes to impart on us. But why did she need to cast a new wardrobe spell when she already has a secret cool outfit that she wears underneath her nerdy one? If that's how she wants to dress, then why doesn't she? Are they low on cash in their mansion? It doesn't seem like her parents are stopping her. In fact, they seem nothing but supportive. But whoa, I forgot, her dad's favorite color is olive. I know, Daddy, this is your favorite color. My life is a walking, talking tragedy. For such a square, her dad does have a sweet sweater collection. The parents don't get off the hook, though. They let their 15-year-old ride her bike around at night alone. <laughs> Witches have no check on their powers. They can just do whatever they want, and power corrupts. There are no rules here. Apparently, the only thing guiding them is their conscience, and I ain't buying that Louise has much of one. Certainly, Madame Serena doesn't. She's the one that plants the seed in the first place that Louise can use her powers to get back at everyone. She's basically giving a 16-year-old carte blanche to terrorize the world. Here's a book of spells you don't know how to control. Good luck! And she's just using Louise for all the magic she's got her evil puppet master. For some reason I don't wish to contemplate, she likes to go to high school dances. But who is she really? You tell me, Teen Witch. Who is this malevolent mastermind? With me being your coach, he's gonna become your love slave. Oh, Serena. Louise was just totally cool with Serena using the last of her magic for her dumb popularity spell. Real good protege, Serena. Yeah. What happens to all the witches who don't conveniently go to a fortune teller for help the night of their 16th birthday? All of this brings me to a major point that I have here, and that's that this film's true hero is Brad Powell. Generally, when you see a movie like this, where the lead is lusting after the jock with the popular girlfriend, the jock is not really that nice himself. But Brad? He's every girl's dream. He's a sport and theater guy. He's part of all social cliques. Look, he's wearing football pads to his audition. He's not concerned with what little box he's supposed to fit in. And for Teen Witch, that's nuanced. True, he almost runs Louise down during a makeout session. Admittedly, that's a point against him. But he immediately apologizes and offers to take her home, which is more concerned than her parents show for her safety. He's a man who's willing to own up to his mistakes. A man with the refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. He respects boundaries. Being this close to you. Sorry. And most importantly, he takes Louise on an Adidas rowboat date. Brad's biggest flaws appear to be shallow girlfriend and bad driving. Louise, on the other hand, is a frightening stalker woman. Throughout the film, we witness her obsessing over him like me reviewing Baywatch. She watches Brad undress like a bleacher goblin, spies on him picking up his girlfriend across the street, and tricks him into a study date scenario while attempting to make him her love slave. And then she just gets him by the end? Psh. Brad Powell deserved better.
The only person Louise is genuinely nice to is her teacher, Ms. Malloy. Thanks to Louise, she wins the lottery, buys a new wardrobe, and goes on a trip around the world with a count. By the end of this movie, she ruins that teacher's life. It's all reversed by the end. Say what you will about all the other dumb spells, but this was all going pretty good for her. Don't see that mention when she was getting her romantic dance with Brad. She could just reverse the popularity spell, but no, she undoes everything she did throughout the movie. She didn't have to do that. What was the point of anything? What changes by the end of the story? Louise still dresses in the same outfits she did after she was popular, and is waited on hand and foot by random dudes. Isn't the point she learns to be herself? This is a story that could have been solved with a simple wardrobe change. And what about Date Rape McGee or Teacher McShamey pants? Do they get no comeuppance? So anything that could be construed as good is just undone? And we don't even see her make up with Polly, so like, everyone else loses but her. But yay, she got Fred! Teen Witch leaves me with a lot of questions. But truth be told, it's just too damn funny to be mad. Sure, the characters might be the worst, but it's corny fun. And you too just might fall in love with Dreamboat Brad. And you can't top that. A Roger, a loved one, joystick, dong, zipper lizard, tally whacker, trouser snake, schlong.